Hello and welcome to this video introduction to the new Metamorph NX 4D Viewer. The 4D Viewer lets you render your image stacks as three-dimensional objects, allowing you to easily explore the spatial relationships between different elements in your sample. The presentation will last about 20 minutes and will cover four topics. First, I will give you a tour of the Viewer's main features. Second, We'll delve into the viewer's isometric surface rendering capabilities, followed by a brief demonstration of the volume rendering features. Finally, we'll see the very cool Data Slicer tool, which lets you quickly and easily see inside your samples. After starting the software, you will see the main display window. The first thing to do is open an experiment file. In this case, we'll use a pre-existing experiment file that I created specifically for demonstrating the features of the 4D viewer. As shown, the display is broken up into a couple of areas. Across the top is the ribbon interface. You work through this interface from left to right. The current home tab includes all the controls you'll need to adjust the display of your image data. The large area in the center is for image display. It also contains the film strip, which provides quick access to other data sets within your experiment. And in addition, it includes the image display scaling tool. Let's load a new data set into the main display. The data is from a zebrafish. It has two fluorescent channels showing the fish's vasculature and blood. We can see from the display that we have 100 Z planes at 40 time points in the sample. From here, we can change how we view the data set. In this example, we are seeing each fluorescent channel separately and can use the scroll bars on the side and bottom to scroll through Z and time. Now let's take a look at this data in the 4D viewer by simply pressing the 4D viewer button on the ribbon interface. To render the image, we will need to make some adjustments. We do this through the channel display dialog to the left of the main display area. We will turn off the first channel and set a threshold on the second. By setting a threshold, we will only show pixel values that are associated with our object of interest. In this case, the zebrafish vasculature. Once rendered, you can zoom, pan, and rotate the image with the mouse. Holding the left mouse lets you rotate. Scrolling with the mouse wheel lets you zoom in and out. And holding the center button while dragging lets you pan the image. As you can see, when I rotate the image, only a sparse data set is presented. This makes moving the image more responsive by not having to render the 3D image with every movement. Now we will switch over to the 4D tab and set up to simultaneously display the other channel. Again, we will set a threshold, this time to highlight the zebrafish blood. Now we can zoom in and rotate to better understand the relationship between the zebrafish blood and its vasculature. Notice how the blood is contained by the vasculature. To help us see inside the structure, we can adjust its transparency. See how the vasculature becomes transparent, allowing us to see the blood that lies behind the vascular structure. Sometimes your samples may appear compressed along the z-axis due to sample mounting artifacts. A z-scaling factor is available to help compensate for this artifact. In this example, we will set the z-scaling to 1.5 and observe how the structure is elongated in the z-axis.
Also included on the 4D tab are facing buttons. These allow you to quickly reorient the data along the axes and are very useful if you find yourself lost in the data. Also included on the 4D tab are the rock and spin controls. If rocking, you can control the angle of rotation and the rock speed. If spinning, you can control the speed of rotation. Moving to the right, we can add calibration bars. We can also add some simple annotation. To help communicate your results and observations, we have three different export utilities included with the 4D Viewer. First, let's export the data to PowerPoint for presentation. Now let's export an image for publication. And finally, we can save the rendering as a movie.
And here is a quick example of the smoothing feature, which can be very useful for noisy images. Some samples are difficult to threshold for the object of interest. In these cases, it is often better to render the data as a volume instead of as a surface. To demonstrate this rendering method, we'll use a sample of a neuron. Again, we need to set a threshold to properly display the object of interest. Once rendered, we can zoom, pan, and rotate as we showed previously. The last tool I would like to demonstrate is our unique slicing tool. This tool makes it easy to slice into your 3D dataset along arbitrary planes and observe the interior of structures. To demonstrate this, we will load a new dataset showing a human brain. We can move any of the three planes orthogonally to find an area of interest in the specimen. You can even arbitrarily rotate each plane to better observe the structures of interest. By hovering over a point of interest on the planes, one can see the image intensity at any given point in the specimen. And that's it. I hope you find this presentation of value. Before leaving, I would like to make you aware of several resources you may find helpful when using Metamorph software. First, our main website, www.molecularDevices.com, where you can find out about our many products and services. Second is our dedicated Metamorph support web portal at support.metamorph.com. Here you can find hundreds of resources to help you better use Metamorph software. And finally, our technical support team can be reached by phone or email at the number and address shown. Thanks for listening.